What's going on, dudes and dudettes? So I wanted to get a lot of this USC recruiting stuff and some of the other miscellaneous USC stuff that I was not able to get to, maybe some, from some of my other teams as well this week, just because there's a lot of USC recruiting news this last week, and I think coming up after Monday, because you'll be watching it Sunday, then I just think we'll probably hear some guys committing Sunday today as you're watching this, and hopefully during the week as well from this big recruiting weekend, but yes, hoping for the best in that situation, but kind of have to talk about a little bit of a downer one, because like I said, Isaiah Gibson, that five-star edge player from the state of Georgia, apparently he is trending to maybe flip to go and commit to Georgia, according to one of the top recruiting guys out there, but he even said in an interview a little bit right before that or right after that, that he is 100% still committed to USC and does not see himself decommitting or changing his team as of right now. But obviously, I'm still glad that USC has still been putting in the work for some of the top defensive ends slash edges players out there. I know there's a four-star edge in Jared Smith, who is from Hoover, Alabama, and then also... a little, California guy, he's like a four-star edge as well, Marco Jones, who a lot of people have been getting out there on official visits too, so if they can't somehow keep Isaiah Gibson, then I don't mind them going after harder, these two guys too, as they already have been going after them pretty hard too, so either way, I still think it's covered if Gibson decides to go, like I said, even at some point the week prior that he was the only one that held up multiple hats instead of just USC hat when he is already committed to USC. That's why I said we had to have him questioned a bit, but as of right now, he is still a Trojan, and that's the best thing. And USC offered the 2026 number one state of Washington overall prospect. His name is Derek Coleman Brusa, and he's an edge player. So, yeah, they're definitely trying to go after him some of the more talented guys, even the number one players in a different state in future classes to try to take down some of their other Big Ten teams. Because obviously Washington also playing against USC in the Pac-12 is joining the Big Ten too. So if you could steal a, a player of that high caliber from one of your now Big Ten rivals, who you will most likely be playing a lot because you're more on the West Coast, then it's always a good thing in my opinion. And there was also another 2026 player, I believe he is, a safety named Jaira, Jaira Edwards, and he apparently has a very strong connection and is building with the defensive backs coach, Doug Belk, and he looks to get out there for an official visit to USC. I think he's from somewhere on the East Coast, but yeah, as of right now, it's looking pretty good so far in that 2026 class, so I cannot complain. And I believe there was a Bishop Gorman Las Vegas offensive lineman that visited last week. His name is Alani Kalani Uvalu. Hopefully I'm saying that correct. Apparently he loved what the team culture is out there at USC on his visit. And I don't think he's like the highest rated offensive lineman on that Bishop Gorman team. But he is still very talented and getting a lot of offers and looks from the other top schools. So if USC can keep a guy who's somewhat on the West Coast, more on the West Coast officially, then <clears throat> I think that'll be pretty good for them to add some more depth and future depth to that offensive line group. And ex-USC defensive back Jane Harris was named to the all-defensive UFL team, which is pretty cool. And I think he was one of the first selections on the cornerback spot. So congrats to him. Hopefully that helps him. And I think he was on the same team as ex-USC wide receiver Tyler Vaughn's that I spoke about pretty recently, too, at a nice final game to this regular season. So hopefully they both get some looks up there in the next level in the NFL. And then Miller Moss, according to PFF, is looking like a breakout candidate this season, which isn't surprising if you're comparing it to what he's done in his career so far, which is really not much. It's just mop-up duty, and yeah, he did start that Holiday Bowl game, and he might have started another game a year or so ago before Caleb Williams game. I could be wrong. I think it was a Cal game. I could be wrong, but either way, it's not that like crazy to say he will have a breakout season, obviously being coached under Lincoln Riley, who can sometimes take even the most regular of quarterbacks and make them look pretty good in his system, and obviously Moss has some more talented. That's why he was a four-star quarterback coming out of local school in Alamany, so I have a lot of high hopes for him as long as everybody else steps up 
around him. He has a lot of great weapons, just distribute. A lot of people didn't think John David Booty would do good, but he had Dwayne Jarrett and Steve Smith and all those great receivers. All you got to do is get the ball to them in the right, correct time, and your stats will look pretty good, and you'll rack up the wins. And apparently USC has the second most college football Hall of Famers with 35, and I think Notre Dame is number one, probably like maybe double digits or right under double digits ahead of USC. Obviously, USC has a future one and Caleb Williams to add to that list. So hopefully USC has had some better track record with some of their guys than Notre Dame has as of late in the past decade or so. So hopefully USC can catch up to that crazy number in the 40s. And ex-USC safety Isaiah Polomau looks like he's going to have a bigger role with the Vegas Raiders. I usually don't want to talk about the Raiders, but because it was a USC thing, it came up on social media on X. So I was kind of intrigued just because I knew I had an up and down love affair with him while at USC just because there are times when he looked brilliant and you just expected a bit more because he is I think his uncle is Troy Palomao even though that last name is spelled differently for some reason but either way he's done pretty okay I guess here and there for the Raiders when he's had to play and I guess he's looking to have to play again while on his rookie deal and hopefully he will have a bigger role, I guess, according to a lot of the coaches out there. So we'll see how he does. And then ex-USC women's basketball player Mackenzie Forbes. I thought she was drafted or signed with the LA Sparks, but it looks like she was just recently signed to the Waverly Falcons, who I think is an Australian team. I could be wrong, but maybe I guess she's just not getting enough playing time and Maybe her contract in the WNBA is not guaranteed, so she's able to sign somewhere else if she got drafted or is signable. So I guess that's what she's going to do to make that little bit extra money. So congrats to her. And USC's track and field long jumper J.C. Stevenson recently won the NCAA championships for that meet or whatever they call it. So congrats to him on being the champion of the long jump in the NCAA. And then a couple of bit of Chargers news to end this video off and maybe a Lakers sing as well. So it looks like the Chargers officially released their veteran center, Corey Lindsley. I think obviously it was part of them restructuring his deal to be able to save some money this season. And then it was kind of like pretty much 100% sure like around June that he was going to find out that he was going to have to retire due to a heart condition or something wrong in that area which sucks because he is still a pretty young guy when it comes to offensive line football years so he probably could have still played a handful of years at that center position but sadly he's going to retire early but as long as it's going to make him healthy and help him out in the long run that is the most important part so yes thank you to signing from green bay and helping out justin herbert in his first couple of years to gain that ability and confidence to do as well as he has been so far numbers wise so hopefully they will be able to find a center for the future also looking up to you bradley bozeman so we'll see what he can do and then ex alabama and i think he was drafted with the ravens or at least previously played for the ravens before he retired he was the defensive back tony jefferson and i think he retired last season, or he did not play at all. He was much more working behind the scenes with the Ravens. I want to say he might have been a scout or just working with the general manager, Joe Hortiz, who is now with the Chargers. And I guess he decided to give him a shot in order to play, like a camp tryout, to see if he could still play and try to make the team. So congrats to him. I guess he's going to unretire if he can end up officially signing him. So that would be pretty cool, I think. This happened either early last week or late the weekend before, and I have not heard anything of an official signing yet, so maybe it isn't gonna happen. But either way, I guess the Chargers were, uh, he was a longtime fan of the Chargers while growing up, so it's kind of like a dream come true for him. So either way, so a pretty cool thing. And according to some rumors and reports, it looks like the Lakers are gonna be offering UConn head coach Dan Hurley an eight year, $100 million deal, at least somewhere in that range, because obviously the main Woj bomb, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, kind of just keeps saying every time he gets asked this question about Hurley, is that it's gonna be a massive offer, a big time deal. So people are just assuming it's gonna be bigger and longer than most 
first-time NBA head coaches, and it's obviously they kind of have to do that in order to lure him away from the chances of being one of the first teams since, I believe, UCLA to win three straight national championships in college. So he obviously, if he stays at UConn, his team has a chance because they're still going to be pretty good. But I guess you can't pass up the opportunity <laughs> to be the Lakers head coach. So I guess they have to throw in that little bit of extra money for him and his family to want to move from the East Coast to the West Coast. So we'll see how this goes. But yeah, I want to get that out there before because I know a lot of people are saying that it could the offer could be signed and done by the end of this weekend, whether he does want to sign with the Lakers or not. So I want to get this out there to hopefully get some good positive news for him to sign with the Lakers by the end of the week, if not sooner than that. Thanks for watching, people. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know what y'all think. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.